We're going to go ahead and call this meeting of the Personal Administration Personnel Administration Committee to order. Today is August 4th, 2020, 12 p.m. As I have mentioned in previous meetings, I, my goal is always to keep this meeting moving and flowing, uh, cognizant of the fact that we have people uh, that are both department heads and counselors and, and others that have uh, a lot going on in their schedules, and I want to be mindful of that, particularly as people are administering departments during this pandemic and everything else that they're responding For some reason, to. It's not Whoops. Everything good on your end, Kim, or do you need us to wait a minute? Yeah, just give me one more second. We're having sure. volume issues. It's not wanting to go through. I don't know why. That's up as far as we'll go. I think that's all I can do. All right. I'm, I'll shut the door. So hopefully, you won't be. <clears throat> okay. We'll go ahead and resume and we'll go to item number two on our agenda. We have the uh, with the health department, we have a, a review of our WIS recommendation on the new financial manager position. I know this was on our agenda at last meeting, but we, I believe now, Michelle, this is our recommendation back from WIS. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And I saw Penny Cottle was on here. I am. Penny, you're here and you are actually away in here. Yes, I'm on vacation. Well, I'm sorry that you <laughs> had right. deserved, much this, deserved this vacation. Worth it. Yeah. <laughs> and we're very grateful to you for everything you're dealing with and doing. Um, but I, thanks for being here. And I'm sorry that you 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 are. We didn't have other plans for you. Right. Have you have you had an opportunity to look at what WIS is saying in this recommendation back? I did. I, I just looked at it a few minutes ago, actually, but um, and I, I'm not surprised. I think it came back as a PAP4 exempt. I'm not surprised, um, although when I looked at and we kind of used the other county financial managers as part of a guide, most of them are PAP3s. So I'm I'm surprised in that sense, but when I look at all the duties that would be required, I'm not really uh, surprised. That probably would have been my expectation originally. Okay, all right. I wanted to open it up, Kim or Elizabeth or anyone else um, with the county, any comments on this recommendation as, or, or questions or other what items? What did it come back as? I don't have that in front of me. Pat it was four. a PAT4 four exempt. Or Margie, for that matter. I would throw that um, out. I, I, uh, I agree with Penny. I think I had talked with her staff about where to put this in the 2020 budget since we didn't have a back yet, and we guessed a PAT3. Given the number of grants and, and the different um, you know, complicated budgets that the health department deals with. It makes sense it's a PAT4. I would like to just make a note that on this recommendation and all the other ones that they issued, they did, of course, give the caveat that it could be reevaluated if the county were to do a countywide um, reclassification project. And that's because they would have sort of the bird's eye view looking at a big um, and trying to make everything consistent across the board. They obviously didn't look at the entire county um, classification you know, system when they made the recommendations that are before you today on, on the various positions. So they did. That. So let me weigh in on this. Um, this is Kathy. So this position is gonna be a special position because this, this department takes in money and has banking services. It also um, has multiple grants and it also does the regular finance work for the department. So this is a more complicated finance director than other departments have. Thank you, Kathy. 
Uh, Elizabeth or uh, uh, open to counselors. Uh, Elizabeth, did you have anything to? Okay. I would just, yeah, I would just echo what what Kathy and Margie said that it's it's a complicated um, position. The department handles handles a lot, so it makes sense to me. Okay, thank you very much, Councilor Hawk. Yes, um, I don't have the the uh, other uh, positions in front of me. Can you tell me how this compares to? a uh, position, uh, say, in the sheriff's department or in that particular one, or say the finance person in the highway department. I mean, the, the highway department is really huge. My dog is the second one. Can you hear? Okay, so the sheriff's department has two financial managers. They have one for the jail and they have one for the sheriff's department. And so, can you well, tell me what they are and what this is being recommended. This one's being recommended as a. I think Elizabeth's looking that up right now. They, um, it, the, I just did it the other day. They're both a um, PAT 3. PAT 3. 35 and this one's, hours. And this one's being recommended as a. At four. PAT 4. Exempt. Exempt. Be because or, so the difference between the sheriff's department and the um, the sheriff's department in the jail and this one is why they might have grants. A lot of those grants come from the courts, and those people don't have to write, don't have to do the mechanics, the Excuse financial me. mechanics. Excuse me. Let, let, could I get the answer about the uh, highway as well as the airport? And, uh, the uh, highway one is also a PAT-3. Okay. All of, it, all, all of our financial, I, I just did something, I think, and I sent it to Trent, uh, where all of our financial managers uh, slash directors are PAT-3, except for in the clerk's office, and that financial person is a PAT-2. So, um, and... Uh, uh, it's about 50-50 with regards to 40 hours versus 35 hours. Okay, well, we should, certainly would not want to make a position that would be classified higher than what is at the highway department because those are gigantic grants that they're working with and huge, huge uh, list of employees and so forth. So, but I, but I do believe they have multiple employees working in finance in the finance department. Where this is going to be the only finance person for for the health department. Am I wrong, Penny? Well, it, it, that's not how it works. Okay. What, um, Council Member Hawk, could you when when you say that's not how it works, could you explain just for my? I'm sorry, my my dog. Can you hear me now? My yeah. dog was yelling, so I was trying to. Uh, um, it, it isn't really um, the amount of work that you have to do, but the, it, the um, kind of job that you're doing. So um, when it's more work, then you hire more people. That's the way that works. I'm, I'm just trying to be fair across the board, folks. I understand that. Yeah. And, and so the point I was trying to make is if you have two people, they don't one person can be responsible for two different things and another person responsible for two different things. But Penny's person is going to be responsible for all the different things because okay, she only has Kim one. Is Shell speaking? No. That was, well, no, that was Kathy. So this, person, so this person does all the technical stuff, the grants, and will do the banking, will do all the technical stuff. They won't have two different people to split the technical stuff to where that the body of knowledge is larger. Let me ask a question here. And I, I, before we go too much further, I do want to remind everybody that we were in the pandemic, we're meeting via Zoom for obvious reasons. A lot of cross channels here. Uh, I, I'm struggling sometimes to follow speakers and that tells me for the public, they are exceedingly uh, struggling. So if we can sort of keep uh, a little bit more order, and I'll work on that to, to questions, answers, and responses. I think that'll help us 
us all out. But let me let me throw this out here. So we've received this recommendation from WIS, which we have identified as the standard for the county. WIS has also got another agenda item for us where they're recommending they look at um, classifications, reclassifications all together to keep things uniform. Won't some of that fairness between departments come out with that process, with that, that due process? Some of our issue now is we have some fingerprints on certain things and good intentions on everyone. I truly believe that. The issue is we've been away from WIS for some time. So I would just throw that out. Won't that get us back into accordance with what they're recommending? And we have a recommendation here from them for us. Any comments to that or? Well, this is Kim. And I wanna say that uh, the whole reason that we went with WIS is to take their recommendations. Um, I do believe and with speaking and emailing with Lori from WIS that this is uh, the financial director portion does need to be looked at uh, with regards to fairness across the board. So if we do go with um, uh, their recommendation, that will be one area. Um, and as they stated in the recommendation, this is just a where they see it now, but as they do the entire um, uh, job description review, that is subject to change, uh, just as well as the other financial manager directors are subject to change. So if I can, um, can with I regards think to fairness, I, I believe they scored this uh, the way they, you know, they pointed it out. So I, I think that's a fair assumption of where to go. I, I know Councillor Spoonmore had a question or comment. I'm going to go to him and then you, Margie. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, Margie. I'll, I'll go after Margie. I just wanted to point out as well that one of the, and as piggybacks on what Kim's, Kim was saying is that, you know, we have a lot of departments that have financial managers. And I think one of the things that WIS would like to look at is whether that's the most efficient way to do this or if it might be more efficient to combine efforts and have financial managers that serve multiple departments. Um, I know that would freak a lot of department heads out to think that they might lose their own financial manager, but the whole point of doing kind of a county-wide look at things is to determine whether our system makes sense or whether there should be any tweaks. So we've recently had, you know, a few years ago, the Parks Department had a financial manager. Now we'll be adding one, um, presumably in health, and and it may, and they're all kind of doing the same things, but for their particular department. And it may be that we look at reorganizing the way we handle the, these positions. At least look at it. So and the other thing I'd like to point out is that um, remember, department heads worried about classifications being set and then lowered by the council because of a reclassification. And the council had said that that was something that they would not be looking to do. So I would caution that if you, you know, I think if you set this as a, as recommended, you will have other departments who are going to be asking to be brought up to that level. And you're probably not going to lower this one once you set it. Right. So just, just a we, we, I think it's, um it's going to be really important if we decide to stay with this model that we have where departments have their own uh individual finance managers that we really get some clarification from WIS on why you know some are factored at a, at a four versus a three versus a two and so that we have a justification for that uh just for for fairness purposes so everyone understands um what uh what's going on with this um, I am interested in, you know, any enhancements that we could make in terms of consolidating uh, these services. If it results in a cost savings, then better uh, uh, service uh, for uh, the departments and for the residents of Monroe County. So I think it's something we should certainly explore with WIS to get an understanding of. But, you know, I don't want something that, how long is it going to take? Is it going to be a year before we get the information back and 
um, before we can make any decisions. If we can do this relatively quickly, um, that would be good. But I would like to explore it as an option, just kind of compare it to our current um, uh, framework that we use now, just my personal preference. I'm not saying that we shouldn't um, do anything with this position right now, but it would be nice to kind of explore what the other option would be. One, one thing I would, I would say is I'm always open to any recommendation we get on better government, more efficient government. That said, um, from my agency day experience, I know that um, I, would, I would want WIS to come back with why precisely this would factor into to any consolidation. And, and I would approach that real cautiously um, because I would want to have, make sure that they're logging in like the time, let's say uh, if it were an example of, of uh, we'll take the penny as administrator and the clerk as the elected official, the amount of time that the office has in chasing the things they need, uh, time lost preparing the, the preparer, so to speak, et cetera. So I think if that should one day come back as a recommendation, we can certainly look at that. Um, I, I do want to, I would want the assurance being that, that the burden and the cost would be factored in as we look at that um, all together. Grant? Yes. A uh, couple of things. A couple of things, and I don't have the the explanation from Wes right in front of me. So, um, and I, nor do I have the other job descriptions. But a couple of things that come to my mind that may or may not be included in those others is one is looking at this person's ability to at least down the road assist with billing um, to be. Ev either a backup or to do additional billing. So whether they're um, helping with the clinics billing or there are other public health things that we might be able to bill for in the future. And this person may be able to help with that. So that could have been something that factored into it. Um, it they do come in as um, assisting with managing our interns and doing some of those other kinds of things in terms of managing. So that may be a difference that isn't seen in those other job, app, the job descriptions, but I, I'm not certain about that. So, so before us now, we have uh, on item two, we've got this WIS recommendation. It's been a minute since we have dealt with one of these and certainly not much one in my brief time on council. I guess my question is, and maybe this is to Margie Rice, what are the options that we have before us right now as we look at this? I think your options are to accept the recommendation or to table it and uh, ask for some clarification if you have further questions. Um, if you accept it as is, you would, the recommendation would pass to the council then for their review and ultimate adoption. If you table it, I think that, you know, we'd obviously get back to WIS today with those questions that you have and, and we could deal with this at a subsequent meeting. Keep in mind that you can meet in as little as 48 hours notice. Um, so if you wanted to not wait a whole month and want to schedule a special meeting, you could always do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I ultimately would like to keep to regular meetings and, and dispense with business that we have if possible. Uh, did uh, Councillor Spoonmore, did you have something? Yeah, so uh, question for Ms. Caudill. This, um, you're wanting this uh, for 2021, right? To include in the budget for two, so when would the position start? Well, Absolutely for 2021. Um, okay. If we could get it this year, yet yeah, this year, it, that would be wonderful. Um, it, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, really, we just need, if, if we're going to take action on this, it needs to be done for budget purposes, really, for 2021 is the, is the key. Mm -hmm. um, so, we've got some time. I think it, I'm not, I'm by no means am I against doing this at all. I just want to, you know, have a, an understanding and an awareness 
from our consultants, the experts that, that we're partnering with on these kinds of things to kind of explain and, and provide some answers for, you know, why would this be a four versus, you know, others that we have factored? Is it just that they're outdated and they need to be updated as well too? I think that will help us really kind of um, round out our decision making on these. Um, I want to say, I mean, you always have the option for right now to approve it as a PAT-3 like the, uh, the rest. And then once the final decision of um, yeah. recommendations from WIS, but you know, I mean, but that's how we kind of got into that mess that we are yeah. now where I'm things a little were wary of, off, the, off the grid. Yeah, I'm a little wary of kind of um, going against the grain with what WIS has recommended. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 agree, I agree with that. Is, is there a motion that a counselor would like to make? Counselor Hot. Yes, I would uh, like to move to table this decision until further information uh, from WIS as well as our own internal investigation about what our other uh, finance directors are paid. You said you made a list. Okay, so we have a motion. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Can I, uh, go can ahead. I ask a question um, of Ms. Rice? Um, how quickly do you think we could get feedback on that? I don't want the health department to have to wait for a long time to, to get a um, we could for sure have it by the next meeting and probably sooner if you would like to schedule a meeting between now and and you know and not wait a whole month you want to schedule one in a couple weeks um and i think that um if to the extent that you have other questions and we'll be talking about the other two positions here in a minute to the extent that you have other questions on these we'll bundle those questions and get them all back together okay so there's a Tuesday before. We have a we have a, a motion in this. Sorry, I'm getting weird feedback. Motion in the second on the floor. Uh, I'll, I'll make one comment before the vote. I think that moving with dispatch is extremely important on this, and uh, we've got a pardon. I'm having a lot of feedback. Council meeting on the eighth. We have um, we have. Kathy Smith is talking. Kathy, um, Trent was I think in the middle of something. Yeah. There are five. Tuesdays in September. And if um, so, you do have an extra Tuesday. If you want to, if you did want to have two meetings, and if I'm just saying, if you want to adjust meetings. All right. We can always I'm not recommending anything. I'm just telling you that you have five Tuesdays. All right. We will, we will. We'll figure out a new meeting time. Um, but my point is this, before we do this vote, I, I'd like us to move with dispatch on it. We got a pandemic and a health administrator coming in on vacation to do this, um, which I appreciate her service this year. So motion to table on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And I was an aye. So um, Megan, does that count? Do you, do you have what you need on that vote? I do, yeah, I got everything. Thank ne you. Next time I'll do the roll call. All right. <laughs> cool. Thanks everybody. We'll move to item number three, the emergency management department and their WIS recommendation. Um, I know I saw Allison Moore here. She hey is, Trent, I'm here as well on vacation, but here. Hi Allison, thank you for being here on your vacation. Thanks. All right, um, do we have any comments from any staff on this, including Elizabeth, Kim Shell, the auditor, and Allison Moore, or Margie? Um, I can start if you want. Um, you. This, uh, so this position uh, is currently a PAT-5, um, they say that uh, additional job duties were added since it had been reviewed in 2014. They say that job requirements for the position did not change. 
and they're recommending it stay as a PAT-5. I will say that um, I wonder if this would be, again, different and if it were reviewed countywide as opposed to in isolation. This is a department head level, and as they point out in the recommendation, they say with department head jobs scattered throughout each classification, they are EXE1, EXE2, it's difficult to make an isolated recommendation for this position. Um, therefore, it's recommended that it remain the same. I, I read between the lines when I read that and say that if this were to be reviewed as part of a countywide classification, it may come back differently. Um, I don't know if that's how you read their recommendation, but that's sort of what I read between the lines. So um, I think that similar to the last one, your options on this would be to accept their recommendation as is or to table it and ask for different, more information. To Eric's point, if you did a countywide reclassification, which is I know on the agenda for later, that they estimate that if you do that in one fell swoop, it would be nine to 10 month process. So just factor that in, into your decision. Thank you very much. Uh, did anyone else have comments from on the staff end? I, uh, this is Kim. I, I did speak with Lori uh, from WIS uh, about this because she asked uh, for me to send her um, all of the departments that had directors. And that's how uh, she found out that the director positions are scattered through classifications. So it, she felt uh, at the time when I was talking with her that when we do uh, the reclassification, this could possibly come back as an EXE, but she didn't want to inflate it just because she's not sure how the others, why they're classified like they are in the lower classifications. So she just wanted to be fair and um, at this point just keep it the same. Go ahead, Ms. Hawk. Seems to me if we accept what they're saying and leave it the same, it is different from the last one because we were concerned it may be too high when they did the uh, change throughout the county, and then what would we do? But in this particular case, it sounds like they're saying, well, it might go higher when we do the whole thing. Now that means we've got everybody throughout the county government it's waiting on to see if their spot is going to be raised higher. So that's something that's going to be addressed when we can do this countywide situation. So uh, in this particular case, I would say we would accept their recommendation for it to remain the same. And then that you might see a change then uh, when we do the entire countywide. Uh, I so moved. I agree entirely. There's a there's a motion to accept this recommendation and a second. I wanted to make sure, Ms. Moore, did you have a comment at all or any thoughts? I just agreed with with Margie in in wanting to know in comparison to others, um, you know, not to compare just with the last position, but the last position that you just spoke of was just a pat four. And I feel that the position requirements of an emergency manager, specifically with the uh, details of a pandemic um, that we have been through, gains much higher than a level of a PAT-5. Um, and I feel that that needs to be highly considered. Yeah. And, and it would be. Mm -hmm. Do I understand, uh, Margie, when you were saying, if we do this countywide, then it wouldn't, what uh, Ms. Moore is suggesting would be considered at that time. Yeah, and I do think that WIS was being extremely conservative on this recommendation. I mean, their words are, um, you know, how with the department head jobs scattered throughout each classification level, it is difficult to make an isolated for this position. Therefore, it is recommended that the position remain classified at PAT-5 exempt until the salary analysis project is conducted. Uh, the council may consider looking at the external market to set the salary for the position until the position is correctly 
classified and a salary analysis performed. The 2020 external salary range for emergency management directors is 52,015 to 69,353 with a midpoint salary of 57,795. I read, again, reading their words, they say, um, until the position is correctly classified. So I think that they're even telling you, we struggled with this one. It probably is gonna be higher, but if you're looking at doing a countywide classification, you know, let's, let's look at it then. Um, I, do, I don't know what the salary is for this position right now, where it falls. I don't know if somebody on this, you know, Kim or Elizabeth can tell us. Um, the salary range externally is 52 to 69 with a midpoint of 57. Where do we fall in? Did anybody? I'm a midpoint higher at 54. Okay. So, so, you know, I do think that this one, that WISP is being real conservative on this recommendation. Um, so, I, I, my guess, like Crystal Ball says, if you do this countywide, it's going to be reclassified higher. Let me right offer now, thing they can do is move her over to Go the ahead, Councilor Hogg. Uh, right now, it appears that we at least fall within that range. Um, right. So, I have a suggestion. If you if you think that that um, that what Margie has said has a lot of uh, legitimate points, you could move her to the higher salary on the Pat Five, the maximum salary. And I think that why we don't do that across the board, I think that if you do think it has you know elements of um, of EXC elements in it, I think that would be a good argument for seeking the max salary for this position. For the Pat Five. So let, let me offer the, the following comments. The I think I think the issue is, uh, and with all candor, I'm uh, Miss Moore's liaison to emergency management. I serve under council, and um, I I see just a tiny bit of what she does, and I know in relation to that how much work that is. The issue I think we have here is that we have been going on our own system for some time with the hunches and thoughts of what we believe to be best. And that's extremely, really good intention. The issue is we have let the system with, that we have with WIS, that has fallen off as far as keeping, backing up those hunches and thoughts with uniform systems. What I see in this is, I see a recommendation that quite doesn't match what anecdotally we think. And I think we, what, ultimately we need to see is something that backs up our system-wide reinforcing what this should be at and then beyond because I think that probably emergency management is going to continue to evolve at just as it has since 9-11 um, and I just I, I, I feel like that we're if we accept this today that we're in a, a motion heading towards that um, when that comes back, but it will, as the recommendation we'll see later, it's going to take time for all that to be real, to uniformly back up what we're, our, what we're, we're believing and anecdotally saying today. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's sort of, it's the professionalization of this versus the, I believe this is here and that's compared to this. This should be a system that tells us what everything moving forward, forward reflects on parity and backs up what yes, our, our it, beliefs are. Out, never Do you have a motion? Motion in a second is on the floor. Um, all those in favor, well, we'll do a roll call on this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what I was going to say, roll call. <laughs> sorry, Megan. It's okay. Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Councillor Decker? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. To table. To table, sorry. Okay. Moving on, we have item number four, uh, the council office review of what WIS recommendation. And again, as before, I'll open this up to comments from staff um, and anyone that has comments to make. Can Margie explain what we're being presented with? Because I don't have anything in front of me. 
Okay, I can explain it. So Thank this you. is the council administrator position. Um, this was, um, remember, I drafted a job description. You wanted sort of a council administrator, like the commissioners have an administrator. Um, so we used the commissioner's administrator as a, as a template, sent that up to Wes. Um, their job requirements include bachelor's degree in accounting or related field with a minimum of three years experience. They assess the position in the PAC category and factor the position using their job classification point factor, came back with 565 factor points. Therefore, they're recommending the position be preliminarily classified at PAC 5 exempt with the understanding this position may be reevaluated and the classification adjusted during the salary analysis project. So this is Kim Shell's position and they are recommending a PAT 5 exempt. But they do say you're know, preliminarily classified at that with the understanding because again, I think with all the recommendations they're saying, we're gonna look at this. If you hire us to look at a wide, we're gonna look at this in the whole. Right, and that's one of the things, again, that was uh, along the lines uh, earlier with uh, the um, emergency management is that there, the uh, director administrator positions are just scattered throughout the classification. They just didn't feel comfortable at that time with um, a higher classification than that. Thank you. So this is a similar situation as what we're hearing. They're hinting at other things down the road, but for now, this is what they're saying. Correct. Okay. Comments from counselors. Um, so the, the next, uh, so basically, I mean, this, this whole, Everything that we've considered up to this point has indicated to me the real need for a county-wide review. And I think, you know, me personally, I think that's what we really need to be moving toward quickly. And uh, I, I think this is just, you know, and we're going to continue to see more and more of this as we um as we consider more of these uh, requests coming our way. And the, the really the only viable solution, I think, is to have the, a full comprehensive uh, countywide review um, of all classifications. So can I see a nod from Councilor Hogg. Do we have a motion uh, that anyone wants to offer? Is the sense to table this as well? Yeah, I'll, I, I moved it. We'll table in lieu of uh, you know further review uh, and a potential county wide review. Okay, and um, I'll second that for purposes. Doesn't make any sense. Don't follow the same pattern because you're all those. Uh, any other discussion on that? Administrate. All right, Miss uh, Megan, if you want to do the roll call. Councilor Deckard. Yes. Councilor Spimler? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes, I guess. No. I don't know. So I'll say yes. How, sir, how long is it going to take to get this done? Well, I think well, that's item number six. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. All right. Well, I. Like uh, Margie said earlier, they said it would be, you know, nine to 10 months to do a county wide, but it's, it's in their recommendation that we're going to address here shortly. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to item number five, prosecutor's office. Uh, Beth Hamlin and the prosecutor, Erica Oliphant, are here to discuss with us a request of an additional victim assistant position, and there is supporting documentation in our packets. All right, I'll turn it over to either Air, uh, Prosecutor Oliphant or Ms. Hamlin. Uh, either of you want to make any comments? Well, I think that Beth is probably going to have more solid numbers for you, but I can tell you that since I took office in January of last year, we've definitely 
um, been hearing that our victim assistance program is overwhelmed. Uh, the caseloads are very high. Um, for the last four years, we've had a significant increase, 34% increase in felony filings. Um, we've actually had a pretty big decrease in misdemeanor filings, but unfortunately, from a victim assistance perspective, the felonies are the more hands-on, time-consuming cases. Our victim assistants work to um, make sure that victims are informed of their rights, by their constitutional rights in a criminal case. Um, they also inform them of court hearings, help them make it to court hearings that they need to appear in, and to connect them up with social services if they need support, um, whether it be therapy, sometimes even housing, emergency shelter, um, those kinds of things. So um, it's a very important role, uh, and we just feel that we have a, a need for, for more people, another person to help us get that job done. And so I'll, I'll turn it over to Beth um, because she's been doing some more research on this. Thanks. Um, well, what happened is we did recognize this need for additional staffing in that office. And so we included in our most recent grant application to the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute, they fund a portion of the salaries for the three victim assistant positions that we already have. We asked for a fourth position, partially funded fourth position, and they agreed with our assessment that we needed that. Um, and granted us partial funding for an additional position, but obviously we can't access that funding unless you guys fund the fourth position. I have current caseloads here. It's it's difficult since they, they each handle a court and so their, their caseloads fluctuate um, quite a bit. I think I gave Eric and Trent some numbers several weeks ago at the latest count, um, the, the way it's structured right now, we have three victim assistants. One is the director of the department. She handles all of the sex crimes, murder cases, high level batteries, that sort of thing. So the more intensive cases, highest level felonies. She also assists with the grant writing and monitoring um, and managing the department. And then we have two other victim assistants that carry the day-to-day -day caseloads in the four criminal courts. Um, they currently have caseloads of, let me see here, a total current caseload of 1,498 cases. The victim assistant director has 154 of those. Those are the highest level felonies. The one of the victim assistants has a caseload of 541 cases, and the other, who's the domestic violence specialist, has a caseload of 803, which is really high. Um, so by adding a third victim assistant, we'd be able to split those courts up and end up with caseloads closer to 450, 500 per victim assistant is our goal. You. Councillor Hawk, you had a question. Yes, uh, well, it's not really, I guess, sort of a question. I, I'm not uh, disputing their need for another person, but they already know what the job classification is and the job description of, of the position they want to hire. So I really, when I looked at this, and as a matter of fact, I even tried to reach you, Beth, on that, I'm not sure why it's here before PEC. I think this is a financial is decision. Job, I mean, they already have the job description. They already have the classification set for another similar job. They just want to hire another one, just like what they have. Is this do I end? Is that what you're saying, Beth? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Okay. I thought the proper process was to go to PAC. Is how I was advised. Well, and I appreciate that if in those cases where. If somebody's hiring another position in their office, we might say, look, here you might be able to reorganize or or whatever, some other kind of office. But in this particular case, you're not gonna reorganize victim assistance. So, so you I have no problem I, I wanna, moving forward with what you I, have, not sending it off to pack uh, off to to WISP because I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't, I agree. I don't think that is necessary. 
No, my understanding some... is that um, if they're adding a position, whether it, you know, a, another employee, it still has to come to pass. Now, Margie, mm -hmm. can you um, clarify? Because that is the reason we added it to this. Yeah, that is, that is correct. It's when you add a new position, it does have to come to PAC first because part of the analysis in the um, recommendation from WIS is to, to kind of for PAC to look and say, does this make sense? Is there a different way to do things? Is, you know, just kind of do, run through an analysis before it gets to the council. Um, and so, yes, that's why they were they were put on this agenda just to follow the WIS guidelines. Right. And, and I, I appreciate that, but the, in this particular case, let's just move forward. There's Come nothing on. to send to WIS. I don't. I, I don't think. Basically, we just need a motion mm -hmm. to, and I'll I'll move that we recommend forwarding this on to council. Yes. Uh, for its approval, but first, can I ask uh, the prosecutor's office a question? What is the time frame that you all have for wanting to onboard a new person? We well, oh, go ahead. <laughs> we're anticipating um, having the position for our 2021 budget. Okay. Um, the grant actually, um, we could draw down from in October of this year, but we wanted to respect sort of the council's preference. No, thank you. Presenting it yeah. for 2021. Thank you very much. This well, is the, the ideal, perfect way to to do this, I think. Yeah. And I'm uh, just so I'm, I, I probably am one, one that has has recommended it. this go to PAC. I'm for anything that reduces PAC agendas, if if not if they're needless. I do see I do see some value it, here. We've had a case made with those case loads, which would turn your hair white if if some of ours wasn't already going. Um, I think that's good to publicly talk about. But if there's if there's anything. Ms. Rice, Michelle, that we that to streamline things, make it easier on, on departments in that process, always open to it. But I think a good case has been made. So we have a motion in a second, I believe, on this floor. Um, I don't think there has been a second yet. No. Do you need a second? Yes, please. Second. All right. Thank you, Councillor Hawk. So we have a motion and a second for this to Go to council, I assume in the budget request, as I believe is your plan, Ms. Hamlin and Ms. Oliphant. So um, all those in favor, well, no, <laughs> Megan, I'll, I'll be quiet. You're in charge, go ahead. <laughs> Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Hawk? Yes. Councilor Spoonway? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you Great, very thank much. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. One item before we moved on, I had um, trying to reconcile any outstanding WIS requests that we have. I know that the auditor was before us last year before our freeze with a request on positions in there. Is that, can someone update me, Kim or, or even Margie, is that away with WIS on the auditor's request or is that coming back? Um, or I Yes, um, I have uh, met with the uh, auditor uh, in those uh, job description meetings, and there was some uh, tweaking that needed to be done to some of the um, job descriptions that they had on file and reviewing at this time. So um, I talked to Lori at WIS and how she wanted to handle uh, those since they're already there in the office being reviewed. So she told me to go ahead and forward uh, Kathy's um, adjustments update. And so she has them now and uh, they're going through them. She hopes to have them back within the next uh, week. Now the only ones we changed were the administrative assistance ones. Right. And then it was just like there was some just a, a question. So just basically, a few words here and there. Yeah, about basically, the uh, three property people ones. She had a question last year, eighteen months ago, about the term economic development person because there used to be an economic development person that worked for the commissioners that was a Pat three. Uh, matter of fact, Jason Carnes had that position, if I remember right. There was two of them, but anyway, that position went away. We took the technical calculation part 
and Jeff does the meeting part. Jeff Copper does the meeting part. So she wanted to make sure that one of the titles last year didn't conflict with that title and that position is gone, so it did not. So the three property positions were fine the way they were sent um, 18, 20 months ago, whenever that was. However, the administrative assistant positions, I think is what Kim is talking about. There was some a little bit of tweaks of that. And I think we talked with Elizabeth about this too. The, the, the commissioner's person and the council person does the same job. And they, uh, the difference is they back each other up if like they were out on vacation or somebody was out sick. Um, so, they, so it's kind of equal and opposite. They also both will do receding, um, do receding in the auditor's office so that we have a second, um, you have to have two sets of eyes on each thing. So that's the same across. Um, the difference as it is today is that the commissioner's person does their minutes and um, the minutes that are in um, the council position is being done by Margaret, but will be moved to Megan, um, the ones that get uploaded on the gateway, uh, which you know they don't want verbatim, they just want it to be um, uh, basically a, 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 an example of what happened with the votes and those kind of things. Uh, that will be done by Megan starting January 1. Uh, so the jobs are very similar and the tweaks were minimal. I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. The tweaks were very minimal. But the two that were tweaked were the administrative assistant ones. The, okay. the others that were tweaked were um, because uh, I was moved from the auditor's office to the council office. My job description included grants so that the grants portion had to be put into a job description, which is the general ledger manager. So that job description is also being updated as well as the county financial director with regards to budgets and that kind of information. So well, I, didn't ask those to go, I didn't ask for those to go up to. So, so I just, for those positions yeah, that, yeah. for those, hold on, I'm getting a lot of, I'm, I'm getting, I didn't say they need to go there. I said they could, but I I'm didn't gonna, ask for hold, can you, uh, I'm going to ask you to suspend just for a second. I want to make sure I'm moving through this agenda and I'm running low on time. I, if a position's away with WIS, we look forward to getting it back. They seem to be moving like lightning. I hope on item number six, they can move a little bit more like lightning. And we're going to jump over to that. I just want to make sure it's moving forward and we're going to get that back. So number six, discussion regarding Wagner, Irwin, Sheely, and Associates Incorporated Engagement Letter. Um, this has been basically what we've been talking about to some extent with these previous agenda items. I know that I had asked uh, Elizabeth to comment or to take a look at this in addition to our own staff. I'm gonna open that up to staff commentary on these three options. And then of course, questions from council. Um, so we'll start off, uh, did anyone on staff end, Elizabeth or Kim or Margie have comments? I can start out by saying if you do this all in one fell swoop, it will cost $98,720. That is option one that Wagner, Irwin, and Chile gave you. They will look at all county positions and elected officials. If you take it in phases, they have recommended two phases. Uh, the one phase is to do the EXE, PAT, Comet, and SO positions for a cost of 82,640. The other option would be to do poll, LTC, and SO positions at a cost of 34,680. I believe that the, um, there are efficiencies in doing it all at once. You would have a savings of $18,600 if you did it all at once. Again, so 98,720 as opposed to a total of 117 and I do think there are efficiencies in doing it all at once. It would be a nine to 10 month process. Um, I know Elizabeth had some thoughts. If you were inclined to break it down, uh, which groups you would do first. Um, my recommendation would be bite the bullet and do, do it all in one fell swoop. Okay. Elizabeth, do you want to jump in here? 
Yes, I had a misunderstanding of how they were breaking it down. Um, I thought it was just one of those options. Um, so that was me not reading carefully. Um, but I agreed that I think it would be best to do it all, everything all together. Um, Michelle, did you want to add anything or the auditor? No, I, I agree with Elizabeth and Margie that it should be done all at once. Um, because I foresee if you did break it into the two groups, there would be some animosity with regards to um, employees in their classification that they're getting done before somebody else is. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and I will tell you, and Mar Marty was around when we did the first one, I was, you know, very instrumental in that. And so was Margie. Um, and we did not do the financial directors at that time. When they came back, they were across the board and we were supposed to go in there and uh, Wiss was supposed to go in there and compare them to each other and give us feedback and so that we could fix that. That didn't happen then and it did create issues. So it makes sense to do everything at once. Hey, counselors, do you have some comments or thoughts or questions? Uh, Counselor Spoonmore. Yes, thank you. Um, I agree like to do all this at once. I'm, I don't like the, I wish we could get it done quicker. I think this is a very, um, sounds like a pretty uh, long time frame. And I don't know if there's any way we can uh, ask to see if it can be done sooner. Probably it, it can't be, but uh, it may be worth asking to see if there, we can get a, a, a quicker timeline uh, to completion on the project. Um, that's just kind of my general thoughts. I guess, you know, do this is, it seems to me much more of a council uh, issue, although PAC should certainly be weighing in uh, because it affects a lot of us, but this is uh, gonna be a, a pretty expensive project that council uh, will need to, there'll be a, a, a significant fiscal impact here. So um, I, I don't know, do we, do we just make a motion to present all of these recommendations to council uh, and, and council would then kind of vet that, or do we make a motion to present one particular recommendation to council? What, what would you say, uh, Margie? I think council would pr probably prefer that they hear a, recommend, a single recommendation from PAC. But have the have have the access to all the, the, yeah. the different yeah. options available. We would share the options, but if you have a feeling, if you all feel, for example, that you want to do it in, in one phase, I would I would suggest that you make that recommendation to the council. Yep. And I like Counselor. I think it's important that we also um, you know look at this in a very comprehensive way, including elected officials too. And in addition to that, once a contract is presented, if the council does agree and and we get a contract, that contract will have to be ratified by the commissioners. Yes, true. Yeah, that's correct. And I would I would recommend that um, Eric do the liaison to the commissioners that you prior to the council meeting where this is heard. And if they could be there and comment, that'd be great. Okay, okay. Councilor Hawk, you had a yes. I don't me. think we. I mean, it's fine if they want to, but I don't think that we need the commissioner's permission to sign on a contract on this simply because the legislation says that we have the right to hire somebody to assist us with this. I mean, I think, Margie, when you look at that, you'll, you might see that we have the right to hire people to help us with this. I agree. The statute does say that. I think as a sort of Thanks. matter of courtesy and also because our our local code says all service contracts will be approved by the commissioners. That's in one of our Monroe County codes. Just think as a matter of course, we take all service contracts to them yeah. and it would be appropriate. But if to they would say no, they, we, I think we still could do it. But regardless, yes, I, I think this is something surely everybody will get behind. What I would hope that we are very careful that we don't keep trying to tweak it all the way along until a, a year from now, when we get all this information back, we've already messed up the whole plan before we even get started. So anyway, I agree with Eric that it needs to uh, move forward to the council. And was your um, motion to go with doing that all at the same time? 
Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion. I uh, to uh, I move uh, we uh, forward these recommendations um, to council with our preferred recommendation being uh, the uh, the comprehensive uh, review of all depart of all classification levels. And second. We've got a motion and a second. Let me just offer commentary. I agree with the sentiment expressed by both counselors. And look, we talk a lot about systems and look how our county works with so many separate departments, officials, needs. We love them all. Anecdotally, we should. Um, however, we need a system that we implement, support, and stay on um, so that it's, it's not garbage in, garbage out, but it's professionalism in and systems that work so that we're not doing the fingerprint, thumbprint method of it seems right, I think it's good, Trent's judgment versus Marty's or in combination with. And so we've got to make sure that we've got a good system in place. So with that, we have a motion and a second on the floor. And I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Miller for a roll call vote. Councillor Hawk. Yes. Councillor Deckard. Yes. Councillor Spoonmore. Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much for that. It is 103. I'll keep us moving here. I appreciate counselors work to do all that and get through these tough things. Next up, we have approval of summary minutes as presented in the packet. We have minutes for Thursday, May 21st, 2020, Thursday, June 11th, 2020, Thursday or Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. Any discussion on the minutes? Mr. Deckard, I uh, move we approve the minutes as presented in the packet. We have a motion to have a second. I'll second. I Councilor, don't, I didn't read them, I can tell you. I did, I did plate. for you. <laughs> good, I trust you folks, were they right? I, they, they were pretty, pretty good. Yeah. So we've got a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Miller, do you want to call the roll? Councillor Spoonmore? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Hawk? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you very much. Any PAC member comments before we talk, just, tell you? Just real quick. Meeting? Just real quick. Um, thanks to uh, staff for all the work on getting. Um, this information from WIS and, and putting uh, the, the time and effort into all of these projects. I think uh, once we get this comprehensive review done, um, it's gonna be to the benefit uh, of, for, for all of county government. This will be uh, a really uh, productive thing uh, that we do. And you know, our job then is going to be, as Mr. Deckard said earlier, with the help of staff, uh, our job is gonna be to make sure that we commit to maintaining this system going forward. That's gonna be the key. And, um, but I'm, I'm glad we're, we're taking action on this. Yes, Councilor Hawk. And Wes is here because Barb Clark and I went to a convention years ago and heard them speak. And we thought this is what we need so that we're not just voting on salaries because we like somebody or we are there on our side of the aisle or because, we like what their department does. We need somebody to look at it from the outside so we don't have our own personal uh, desires to please those people that we know that will mess up the whole system. So I, I really uh, thank Barb Clark for making sure I went with her to that convention. Mm -hmm. Thank Make you very much. Make a difference in this county. Thank you. And with that, if there's no other comments from counselors, we are at 106 and I appreciate our quick work and deliberations on important matters before the county and seeing no other business before us, unless, Michelle, can you tell us our next meeting? I believe that is September 2nd. Is that what we came up with? I think that's right. That's uh, a word, no, right? So, sorry, September 1st. Yes. September yes. 1st. So we... Yeah, I have it right now on the, my calendar showing at 5.30. That's probably not right. Um, we hadn't decided on a time if you want to change it or not. Counselors? Any, I'm, I'm fine with 5.30 or noon. Either works for me. 
I, I like that noon. Let's get it done. Well, get like it out of here. All right. So noon on September the 1st, correct? All right. With no other business before this committee, I will go ahead and adjourn us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Trent. Thanks.